everybody. I'm doing a follow-up session for a client. So I'm going to be sharing some distance energy healing and some psychic wisdom. We're going to be continuing where we left off, exploring soul origins. If you're interested in checking out that previous session, I'm going to put a link in the description. And if you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one in a psychic session, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. I want to thank you so much to the client. It's really exciting to get another opportunity to work with you on this. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube as well. I'm going to read your goals out loud and then we're going to get started. So you say... Hi, Abby. Thank you for the last session. I relate to a lot of what you shared. I would like to work on changing my relationship with letting love in. So any part of me that is not letting love in, I want those parts to realize I need this love and I'm open to receiving and being a part of this love. And maybe that too is part of my soul origin, the sound of love. Maybe I'm a unique sound of love, like those 24 voices that sang a note all at the same time. You mentioned there being layers around me, each with a unique sound, and that these are in the way of me hearing the sound of my own soul. I'd appreciate any additional support or insight you can share. Thank you. <laughs> I really like this. There's a common word here called sound, and it's... Just a moment because uh, reading your goals and then tapping into our approach here is, is actually full of sound, but I couldn't identify what the notes are more, more so than the way that it is impacting my energy field. Um, like I feel, um, I guess uh, if a sound could be a color that starts quite faint and then gets really, really um, powerfully bright, um, but let's not define it as a color or a specific note, but a sensation of developing and developing and developing, like saturating in the thickness of itself, vibrational energy. Um, I feel that, okay? All right. So you are ready. The rock man <laughs> is ready to let the love in. And that emanation with the 24 voices... Um, expressing a sound at the same time um, came to nurture you and to support you and letting that in and anything that was at the conscious mind saying, oh, I want this, but then beneath the surface saying, no, I don't want this at all. I want to stay as this rock person. Um, we're telling them now that no, it's time for a change. It's, it's time we let this love in so that we can know who we are. And it's about finding out who you are because you're really wanting to know your purpose here as like an authentic part of your soul. Know who you are. Your soul origin then impacts the purpose that you can express through the depth of who you are. And I feel like I, I'm just taking a little bit of extra time here to really tap in to some different layers of this in order to make this the most impactful, because I, I feel like the, there's a sensation of getting caught up energetically, what you're ready to achieve here, getting caught up in yourself, and it's a big flipping deal, okay? So, it's like, I, I appreciate any additional support or insight. It's like, oh man, I think we're gonna go to a new level here with you. <laughs> it's gonna be like pretty intense, I think. <sighs> All right, that was the other one was, um, I could tell there were just, maybe there are layers of um, paths your soul has taken, like specific lessons that have kind of layered together and, and you just let them kind of saturate around you and create their own sound. So it's a little bit conflicting as, um, was that me or just what me experienced? And now me is returning to the root of who I am to, experience, um, to express myself at the root again. So I, we'll find out more about that, okay? All right. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? <laughs> okay, here we go.
All right, so you're telling yourselves, your inner selves that no, I make, I'm making a conscious choice and I'm saying we're gonna let the love in. And so at the helm of power, <laughs> I'm saying you're going to let love in. I I want this. I want to be the root of who I am. I want to be my soul origin expression. I want to know what that is. I want to I want to emanate what that is. I want to be my purpose based upon who I am at the root of who I am. I mean, you literally are saying this. Hmm. This is not not, uh, this is complicated. Okay, my guides are telling me to try to explain what's coming to me as best I can. And I will tell you, there seems to be a strange man. He represents um, a man that can fly like a, a magical person, like a mage, a sorcerer type, using magic to um, override gravity, basically. And he's levitating in the sky, and he represents the night and the day. And he's quite scary, to be honest. He represents um, a wild card as well. And he holds a, what can only be described as a trident. It's kind of a peculiar thing to carry, but he has a golden trident. And at the time he, he says, I'm, I will kill you, he says, I will bring you to life the same time he, he he first he says i will kill you and then he says i will bring you to life he says it at the exact same time and he says this trident is a threat but then the trident um glows and it kind of gleams with a golden um sheen and it says this trident is a gift is a gift and he says use your gifts wisely but he has a, one look is um, a look of, to kill, okay? And the other look is a, a look of nurture in a way. But I don't feel like nurture is the right word. It's too motherly. It feels like, um, okay, his robe, his garment is literally, half of it is black and half of it is white. But he says that there's another... It, it, he's basically saying that life isn't about the dark and the light. It's, a, it's about something we didn't see. And people don't realize that I'm wearing another garment that they cannot see. And he, he kind of gets annoyed, like, rolling his eyes. Like, um, people think they see things, but they see nothing. He, he's very um, sharp tongue about this. And, and then he says... Uh, People don't know what they see. <laughs> and then he shows that he wears an invisible garment and that too is the garment that he wears. It's not just about the dark and the light as though there's only two concepts that we exist in. It's preposterous. It's a joke. And he's irritated by this. And... Uh, he needs you to really reflect, too, on the other garment, which is invisible, but essential to what holds the dark and the light in the balance. Because otherwise, the dark and the light would just be everywhere without this. It, basically, an invisible layer, okay? The invisible garment keeps the dark and the light in balance. You're a keeper of keeping the dark and the light in balance. You're the invisible garment. He says, it's very hard when, when people can't see you. Very hard when people can't see you. See everything but you. They don't even acknowledge how important you are. <sighs> can't see you. <sighs> it's like you, you can't ever stop being that invisible garment no matter what. Because you won't ever be able to stop being the invisible garment, no matter what, okay? Sorry if you don't like it. <laughs> He's very uh, direct about this. I'll say, like I mentioned, energetically, it's uh, very... Uh, 
building, 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 building. It's like this, okay? It just keeps building. I mean, I can imagine that you must be shaking. Like, I'm shaking, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Because uh, when the light catches on that trident, it's like, I don't know if it's enlightening me or ripping me into two pieces. It's like, I keep looking at that trident, it's like cutting me into two pieces, and then it's like, whoo, I see more. And it does it at the same time, okay? <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay. I, I don't know why, but I need to make a joke right now. And I tell him, I'm like, do you know something? You're like, you're only a part two. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm saying that to him. It's like, you know, there was a part one. There was actually a part one before you ever came around. And now what? Now you finally decide to show up and you're just a part two. <laughs> like, like I'm trying to like make him less than. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I just need to challenge his authority or something. <laughs> okay, let's see what he does here. <laughs> I don't know why everything's getting so funny right now. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I will say what this is about is a very hardcore, <laughs> very, very, very intense, very rumbling. It's a very, um, it's like an earthquake in spoken form. It is like an intense lightning bolt that strikes through a tree that's been standing and it's kind of unbreakable, but no, it's been ripped in two pieces and now we see the aftermath. Um, it turns the tree into, um, you thought you were strong until I came around, <laughs> blast, snap, pieces, okay? So you are this lightning bolt you are this invisible garment that holds the dark and the light together that require it to stay in the balance. You represent that, okay? And it's interesting because we're talking about sound and voices and this is very um, rumbly and earthquake-like, okay? And so the, those 24 voices were, um, I mean, literally they, they were channeling the power of healing literally every thread in, in, in the very fibers of a soul, which is the infinite threads, and that they could do it instantaneously if you were conceivably capable of receiving that. It feels like you would blow up, but you wouldn't. You would just be healing immensely, but what does that mean anyway? And sometimes it seems like pain is healing. The things actually heal in pain too. So we want to just not have pain anymore, but pain is part of healing. It, it's, life is like this, truly is. Okay, I, I feel like maybe I, I'm laughing as I need a breather from that, I don't know. It's like parents that are like grumpy and angry and they're belligerently yelling at their like five-year-old and the five-year-old's just laughing because they don't know what else to do. <laughs> That's what you, this <laughs> conversation is like. Okay. <sighs> All right, let me see how I reconnect with him because he's very overwhelming. He, he is who he is. I mean, short doses at times, perhaps. He says that is one of his challenges because if people can only take him in in short, small doses, I mean... If he is to truly be himself, if you are to truly be yourself, you may be extremely hard to digest, extremely overwhelming even. You might actually um, pull the train right off the track, you know? But if that's who you are, then it seems to me that you need to own it, that you pull trains off tracks. You shatter a mountain in the snap of a finger. You, um, that tree thought it was living a peaceful, long, long life. A beautiful, big, sturdy tree, and bam, no, done with. It's like your burst of power. But you're a profound and essential meaning that we often overlook. So you provide the the sight the the clarity to see 
for others to see what they overlooked so that they can't see it without you. And people need you, actually. And maybe it's harder to cross paths with this emanation of who you are. I mean, when the tree crossed paths with the lightning bolt, it probably didn't like that too much, right? Then it had to be reminded that it, its life is impermanent. Was it cruel that it got hit with a lightning bolt or was it just divine time? You know what I mean? And if you see it as divine time and not cruelty, then it might help you to embrace who you are. Gosh, this is pretty, um, this is coring me out. I feel like I'm cored out. I feel like um, somebody took the ultimate ice cream scoop and took everything out from the inside of me and then turned into a sludge and threw it away. And it's not that I'm burnt out. I'm cored out. I feel like I, I'm cored out. I'm even like cylindrically removed somehow. And I ask him, um, I tell him that da 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 da. I'm like communicating really quickly, um, just recapping everything that I felt, saw, you know, my silly comment, etc. The way this all made me feel openly and honestly, because that's what we do. We always communicate openly and honestly. And um, I say, what, what is, it's like, okay, that, <clears throat> that's the next thing. I, I say to him, you know, I read these goals and you're ready to let the love in and you're ready to let in these sounds and really understand your soul origin and feel like maybe he's a representation of your soul origin, actually the divine truth of who you are rumbling through his presence, right? Overwhelming, intimidating, um, essential still, essential, right? And I, I say, just tell us the next thing. I mean, I want to, I'm going to turn into you now and you're going to deal with this guy. <laughs> you're going to deal with yourself here. You're free. Like, I just like, I feel like the train that got pulled on my tracks one too many times in just this brief period of time is pretty flippin' awesome, by the way. I mean, it says something in and of itself. Where's the soft side of this? Maybe, maybe that's a, an, an interesting um, angle that's worth exploring here, but maybe, maybe we just need it to be tough right now. He calls you brother, but he says that um, he, you're no brother at all to you, but to himself simultaneously. He calls you brother, but then he says that you are no brother at all but then he immediately, it's like at the same time as saying that he is no brother at all. Almost like you are the same person. Would you call your reflection your brother? Or would you call your reflection the same person? He says, would you be able to tell the difference? If you were looking at your reflection, it would look like you, wouldn't it? So would you call your reflection your brother? And how would you know the difference? He's actually looking at me quite sternly, like, like he's showing me the trident that's like slicing me and then, oh, enlightenment. <laughs> and he's um, saying to, that, um, to identify this as he is not you and you are not him, although you might be quite um, similar. <laughs> he prefers it to be identified in this way. He asks you if you know where the ground is that you stand on, and he spits at your feet. And he calls you pathetic. But really, he's just challenging you to remember who you are. I just tell you that as like a side note, because I don't know if I was supposed to say that or not. <laughs> I'm just telling you, okay? <laughs> don't take offense or anything. It'll make you stronger against this guy. <laughs> I'm in your corner. It's like Rocky Balboa. I'm in your corner. We got this guy. <laughs> okay, let's see what comes next here. <sighs> you, what you do is you... Oh, man, I can't believe you're doing this right now. <sighs> you stop time, but you do it in a very interesting way. I don't know if you're imploding time. It feels like you're imploding time. But you didn't um, take away the past. You kept the past. Um, you're picking up the saliva, actually. 
and you turn it into a weapon of, uh, I mean, it, I don't know, it seems to represent uh, something that would kill him, okay? Uh, it's just, I don't know how it's it's a very sharp object, or it's a virus, or it's, um, it's something of d a destructive rule. And then you s you basically ask God, what are you going to do with this? Because this is dangerous, you say, to God. And you can't let this poison the, any environment. You cannot let this poison any environment. It is poison. And he, he kind of, um, your brother here is more like a he has to respect you because there's something of your nature that would um, pick up his poison that you would be more perceptive of the the key components of balance he seems more drawn to wanting to create rot or destroy the world. I mean, he just seems like he's more prone towards um, always being destructive. And you're prone towards um, knowing when there's time and when that time is complete. It seems like he does it one, he takes it too far, really. Like, he, he seems like, I'm just really looking here. I'm I'm putting him in many different scenarios to see how he would he would handle like what is he doing to planet Earth? Like what would his be his style with um creating destruction here, for instance? And what would you be your style with it? He's uh, he is not easily um, perceived because he will he will seep into things you didn't think that were him he um, he would suddenly be your depression for instance he would suddenly be your undoing um, he would suddenly be um, a divorce case or something like this because not all things are natural <laughs> Some things are unnatural. It's so interesting. I, I just did a journey with Metatron and he was using those words, natural and unnatural. And a divorce case is unnatural, apparently, because it doesn't grow from the ground and it doesn't... Um, it's just a tool, basically, that we came up with in our minds, a tool that we came up with in order to, I guess, solve our problems, but it too is destructive and painful. It's like splitting a tree in two pieces, the lightning bolt. And he is always this way. He's always this way. He's always, whether it's natural or unnatural, he's always um, a destructive force, always. But there's something odd and different about you because you're almost like trying to tie him up. You're trying to contain or control him because you would define him as out of... No, is that the right... I don't think out of control is quite the right terms. Maybe you're harmonizing him into being less of himself. I mean, what if he did a thousand things? You would want him to do 99, okay? It's like... But he was entitled to do all those thousand things. He couldn't cross the lines of God anyway. So he literally is doing God's work of being basically a representation of destruction. God's work here. He is a benevolent being. I'm telling you, he sucks, but he's a benevolent being. He is a gift. It's like, is the lightning the cruelty? Or was it the divine time? He's, I'm sorry, but yes, he is a benevolent being. And this is where the question mark arises because is, is God 
God giving him a thousand tasks and saying, I want you to clean up, uh, you know, all of these tasks so that there's only 99 left. <laughs> I can't do the math in my head right now. But you know what I mean. <sighs> Why would God do that? Why would God give him a thousand tasks and then you need to clean up all of those so only 99 actually happened? That feels like you're a freaking garbage collector or something. You're like... um trying to clean up his mess. It's like Batman trying to keep up with Joker. I, it's just annoying. It doesn't feel right to me. But something is right about this, and I'm not, I don't know it fully yet. You know, we were talking about sound. This is the sound. This is actually the sound. Oh, you know, okay, okay, okay. I just got an idea. He's your reflection, right? So if you let that 24 voices, let's say, completely in, he then is simultaneously letting it completely into himself. What does that mean when the element of basically God's wrath um, absorbs some other element? What, what then happens? But he is somehow simultaneously himself, but somehow you too but it, it keeps saying no he's not you but you're somehow brothers you're somehow connected here you're going to explore this because you feel like something of your purpose is to resolve this handle this stop him um uh, something like this would Batman ever be able to stop Joker? Could they ever finally, just one of them will have to die, I guess. Or Joker um, decides that he wants to be like a spiritual guru and doesn't want to hurt people anymore. Like, decides to just completely um, take a turn for a different direction. I mean, what's really, what, what do we have going on here? I don't think you'll ever let him go. I feel like you could describe him as a menace, really. But he's benevolent because he's doing God's work, but you seem to know something else about him. You are tracking him all the time. He's pretty dark, to be honest with you. I tell tell him he's a part two. <laughs> you know what? You're just like last week's meal. I mean, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I just feel like doing that. Okay. <laughs> this is hard for you for some reason. I feel like he's the one that's blocking you from doing this, but I don't want to give him any credit for anything, to be honest. I, I feel like you need to be your own person, and he needs to get on with his life like you you two need to go to two different parts of the universe or something but you wouldn't feel comfortable with that you wouldn't feel comfortable letting him go actually it would be like batman just letting joker do whatever he wants it, you wouldn't be able to I, I feel like that's a misconception i feel like that's lying to yourself i i don't let god deal with it why do you have to be the one that deals with it you, you need to just, you need to let, put this in God's hands, to be honest. You need to stop being, taking so much responsibility. It's like realizing that your brother's a, a POS, you know? And it's like, I'm, I'm not going to clean up your mess anymore. I'm not going to do that for you. Even though we're family and I love you, I'm not doing it for you. You're, you're a problem person. And I, I will, I'm done. You close the door. I'm done on, with you. You're in God's hands now. I don't care how many people you decide to hurt. I, I keep picking up your messes. I keep dealing with... I, you're destroying me and, and trying to, to correct what you're doing. Like, it's trying to... It's kind of like this, to be honest. But he's not lying to you either. He is not... That comes to me loudly that what he said is true. What he said about the dark and the light and the invisible garment is true. Because you say, say this and what he said about I will kill you and I will bring you to life is what he said is true. And he, what he represents is true as well. 
we need to really heal your relationship with the so-called brother and heal the relationship with yourself and heal your relationship with love because that will heal him it will heal you it will heal it all okay now this is takes uh requires some energy for one requires some um, some deep diving okay it requires some healing I, I definitely do um, agree with my spirit guys that that rock man was, has nothing to do with your soul origin at all. I mean, it's just a place marker. It's just a starting point. It's just a beginning, right? And then from there we get to, to circulate into more and more and more um, a wellspring of awareness. That uh, 24 voices is a female energy. She represents um, also what is kind of like a pegasus, to be honest. It's a beautiful white um, horse that has white wings. She represents a rainbow waterfall. She represents kindness. You put too much burden on your own shoulders. You take too much responsibility for too many things, to be honest. That's what she's emanating. And that's what all those rocks are, is heavy weights that you carry. Too much responsibility for other people. You need to send uh, you need to send you need to send this stuff back to God. I would send this stuff back. You're working on acclimating and you're welcoming her into your heart and you say that I, I'm choosing to see you, I'm choosing to hear you, I'm choosing to acknowledge you, I'm choosing to receive help from you. And it's like don't be so bold that only you could help you. Don't be so bold. It's like, um, it's kind of, um, <laughs> it's like a sheesh. We're not good enough to help you, seriously? <laughs> like, come on now. Um, yeah, you're great and all, but you're freaking turning your back on all these other greats too. Like, you, you do need help just like the rest of us. It's just, that's the whole point of your session. You acknowledge that. But there's something, um, you're really rigid in just helping yourself and that's it. You're too rigid in it. Like only you can help you is not true. She, believe it or not, at first you're letting her in and it feels like she, she's like sour milk. She tastes very, very, gross I don't feel like she is sour milk I feel like what she's cleansing is creating this reaction so again would encourage you to push her away but it's really what she's helping to clear out of you it's coming out of you not her which would make you vulnerable to working with other beings because you wouldn't realize that what you're picking up on is your stuff, not theirs. But it would appear to be their stuff, but it's not. It's your stuff. I see that when this love comes in, you see actually other faces, and it looks like um, she's evil beyond evil, okay? She's basically raping you. She's forcing, um, she's uh, sick. She's a sicko. Um, she's emanating being a sicko, okay? And you're crying and you're asking her to stop and uh, you're in chains and bondage. And um, it's so much cruelty and so much um, wrongdoing upon you and you can't make any of this stop. 
But you're actually, for the first time, it seems to me like this feels like for the first time facing, um, it's like shadow work. You're actually working on, I guess, self-punishment. Is that, is this, a, if you, are you a, would it be like someone was punishing you, but you created the perfect scenario for you to punish yourself by aligning with people that would do you harm? Because what would that lightning bolt brother, perhaps you're the part of him that um, processes his shame and who he is. I think you're more the same person than he wants to admit. I think you, you are the more gentler side that is processing the shame of what he just relentlessly can't stop doing. And he can't stop doing it because then he'll have to spend time with his shame. And you are both the same person somehow separated, but somehow one. And no wonder he doesn't like you because he doesn't like himself. Because his role is hard. Because it has many different meanings based upon where he has to work in his role. And not everybody likes a lightning bolt when it breaks your tree apart. Nobody thanks the lightning bolt for doing that. And sometimes the lightning bolt does things that we are thankful for. That's why what emanates is that the lightning bolt, you could say, is the dark and the light side. But there is this invisible other energy that holds it all in the balance. And... I will tell you what, we've made um, incredible steps here. You don't feel like you're being tortured by this. It's a, it's a sick psycho woman, basically. I don't know how to interpret her other than she's a sicko. She takes sicko to another level. And you're always in chains and she's always doing awful, terrible things to you. Inappropriately so, inappropriately so, and it, it um, is a stain on your sacral chakra. It's torturing you, your sexual body. And this Pegasus woman is wanting to heal that um, pain for you. And she reminds you that when your sacral chakra um, is fruitful, that you could grow like a garden of Eden, like things will th grow and thrive. But when your sacral chakra is desecrated, then everything in your life will feel desecrated as well as yourself. And you won't be able to be who you truly are because you won't have a love for who you are. And it's important that even the lightning bolts are loved for who they are. And it's funny because she reaches her hand to touch yours, but at the same time, the horse puts its hoof <laughs> into your hand and you touch both the hoof and the, the hand of this woman. And she just wants you to feel that she's here with you and that she's supporting you through this. And she says something like, there's still a lot of magic left in this world, as there's a lot of magic in you, she says. Hmm. So that's what I, that's what I have to say about that. Hmm. That was pretty incredible, that's for sure. Hmm. Thank you so much for this experience. Thank you for sharing and Thank you everybody for watching, for all your kind comments. I hope you all have a great day.